Hello, I am Prabhash and I welcome you all to Engineer's Fate. In the last class, we have discussed hydrological cycle. Before proceeding today's class, let's discuss some of the points that is been discussed in the hydrological cycle. So the first point is river, lakes, oceans and springs get water from the rain. So whatever the water is present in the river, lakes, oceans and springs, they generally get water from the rain. The second point is rain water is obtained by evaporation process and that is from river, lakes and oceans. So in the third point that the hydrological cycle is a continuous process of evaporation and precipitation of water in the atmosphere. Uh, we have seen uh, what is the hydrological cycle in the last class and uh, from clear point of view this statement is correct. So what is the catchment area? It is the area from which a river or stream catches water. So it is generally an area where uh, the water is collected uh, and uh, that water goes to the uh, river or stream. So the area from which river or stream catches water and, uh, and now the second point is ridge. The line which differentiate one catchment over other is known as ridge. Suppose this is a catchment and this is a another catchment uh, and the line which differentiate two catchments and this line is known as reach so this is one important point and the last important point before moving to the today's class that is runoff and runoff is surface runoff plus groundwater flow and we have discussed uh, while uh, occurring uh, rain or precipitation generally what happens the soil is dry and it's a uh, it's has some fill capacity and after uh, uh, it's uh, getting saturated we have discussed that the uh, there will be no further uh, saturation limit for the soil so that there will be runoff and then uh, there is water table is present over here also there will be some ground water flow and there may be some uh, sea or uh, any river to which the run this run of water will be getting uh, joined so uh, you have to remember runoff is surface runoff uh, plus groundwater flow sometimes the groundwater flow is known as base flow and the use of base flow will see in uh, hydrographs so let's move further to our main point that is uh, precipitation and we'll discuss the precipitation and rain gauges for the today's class so let's begin with the chapter precipitation so what is precipitation normally any form of water reaching to the ground surface is known as precipitation and here in the uh, term of precipitation we generally deal with rain so let's discuss any form of water reaching to the earth surface from atmosphere is known as precipitation so rain is the size of the raindrop is greater than 0.5 mm and the size of Raindrop, uh, raindrop is less than 6 mm so that will be ca uh, called as rain so what is rainfall rainfall is equal to interception loss plus depression storage plus infiltration loss plus then we will discuss the type of precipitations the, the first one is cyclonic precipitation the cyclonic precipitation you generally you can find in weather forecast first main point is cyclonic precipitation first point is uh, occur in low pressure region first point you have to make it in mind and in the wind is in anti-clockwise direction in northern hemisphere this is the important part in northern hemisphere and the definition you can write the precipitation caused by lifting air mass due to pressure difference it, this is the accurate uh, definition and the anti-cyclone occur in high pressure region and the wind is generally clockwise direction in northern hemisphere so this is cyclonic precipitation and the convective precipitation what uh, uh, convective precipitation generally is suppose this is the ground and uh, there is sun is present due to sun's uh, presence uh, there will be heating of the ground level so heating of the ground this is ground so uh, so air mass is generally heated 
and then uh, the air will go further upward 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 suddenly that heated air will be mixed up with the cold air and then what happens rainfall occurs so uh, what happens the precipitation caused due to upward movement of warmer air as compared to the surrounding air so generally the surrounding air may be when the air mass is going upward upward generally uh, when we are moving up uh, in the elevation the air pollution we have studied that uh, the uh, temperature decreases when you move up generally uh, temperature decreases so that much thing is happening over here so this is the convective precipitation and this normally happens high intensity of the rainfall in short duration you can uh, see uh, sometimes the intensity of rainfall uh, is quite high and uh, the duration will be some less so what is intensity we'll discuss later so next is oro orographic precipitation so uh, in the orographic uh, precipitation this may be a pond is there or whatever some lake or uh, or lake or sea whatever you can find so sun is present here due to sun's radiation the water vapor goes to the atmosphere then clouds are formed the wind will be present here so due to wind the cloud is move 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 up further then the cloud is generally collide with this huge structure this huge structure is mountain so what happens rainfall occurs rainfall occurs so in uh, in this side the side is known as windward side and the opposite side is known as leeward side so what happens generally the intensity of the rainfall is quite higher in the windward side and the intensity of rainfall is quite less so less uh, in the leeward side and this type of uh, precipitation is known as orographic precipitation so its uh, proper definition will be precipitation caused due to striking of air mass with a tropical feature so on the mountain you can take it as a tropical feature and uh, these things generally happens in uh, Maharashtra uh, due to the presence of uh, uh, Western Ghats uh, some part uh, in uh, in a other uh, in a other side there will be a huge rainfall and uh, in a, in a next side there will be quite so less rainfall you can find these things in Maharashtra due to presence of Western Ghat and uh, in the last uh, the precipitation is frontal precipitation so what uh, the frontal precipitation generally is suppose the uh, due to there will be warmer air the this warmer air is moving further due to wind and uh, this warmer air getting connected uh, getting connected with cold air suppose the cold air is present here so warm air and cold air they get mixed up and uh, what happens the cold air density is higher than the warm air density so one warm air move above the cold air so what happens um, the warm air uh, just uh, getting above due to the cold air and there is a front is uh, generated then what happens uh, the precipitation occurs this type of rainfall is known as frontal precipitation so we have discussed the types of precipitation next will be go to the types of rain gauges whatever the important points only i will tell them and next whatever the required points i will tell and will read thoroughly by book i will discuss only those points which are mainly important for the exam point of view only whatever you feel important you can find it and read it from a textbook so let's begin with a types of rain gauges and the rest important parts so next thing we'll discuss about how to measure uh, precipitation that is how to measure rainfall suppose i will give a beautiful example suppose uh, yesterday uh, what happens my father told me that uh, prabhas it will rain right so what i will do i know that tomorrow it's going to be raining so what i will do i'll just this is a ground and I'll simply keep a bucket over here so I will simply keep a bucket so the rain uh, started at uh, 12 a.m. in the midnight and it's continue for 24 hours right 
12 am that morning to that night to 12 am in the next midnight so what happens uh, the rainfall duration is 24 hours and uh, after the finishing of rainfall what i find that uh, that my in the bucket the water depth of water was 12 cm so uh, i know uh, when the rainfall will start the, uh, the rainfall will start at 12 am in the midnight up to 12 am in the next midnight and the rain, uh, rainfall duration is 24 hours after finishing of the rainfall uh, uh, i just measured the depth of uh, water that uh, i have uh, uh, placed in this bucket and i found that the depth of water is 12 cm so what is the intensity of the rainfall intensity of the rainfall is nothing but depth by time so what is the depth of the water uh, that is in the bucket that is uh, 12 cm and what is the uh, duration of the rainfall that is 24 hours so intensity of the rainfall is 0.5 cm per hour right so this uh, in this type of principle the rain gauge is what the rain gauge is uh, also known as hydrometer, umbrometer or fluviometer um, what they uh, do they measure rainfall some uh, type of rain gauges non recording type rain gauges they only record depth of the rainfall that means the this type rain, uh, rain gauge will not mention uh, what is the intensity of the rainfall they simply uh, record the depth of the rainfall that is the depth of the rainfall is in the rain gauge station is 12 cm they only measure these things 12 cm only uh, record the depth of the rainfall and uh, the example of non recording rain gauge is simon's rain gauge and uh, next what happens the next discuss about recording rain gauges uh, gives values of rainfall depth with respect to time that means uh, the recording rain gauges simply give the intensity of the rainfall uh, simply gives intensity of the rainfall if I put an rain gauge uh, of recording type and it will give me intensity that means it will show me how much rainfall uh, occurred in how much uh, time so it simply gives like 0.5 centimeter for hour it gives intensity for example i have taken this example 0.5 centimeter per hour so recording rain, ga rain gauges give uh, uh, values of rainfall depth with, uh, with respect to time that means recording rain gauges uh, tell us rainfall depth also uh, with respect to hours but the non recording rain gauges only show the depth of the rainfall means they will only tell us what is the rainfall depth only they will not mention about this rainfall depth with respect to any hours so the most important part i will discuss that so intensity is known as depth by time depth is p i will write time is t so intensity equal to p by t you have to remember these things implies that precipitation p equal to intensity i into time this is also no important point you have to remember this two things and this only two things will be in problematic part from this chapter the problem i will discuss in the uh, while solving the problems part gauge network so uh, we'll study how much uh, rain gauge is required uh, for a catchment area suppose uh, we want to find how much rain gauges is required that is rain, ga uh, rain gauge density that is given by catchment area divided by total number of stations in that catchment area for this 
point we have the i code have mentioned three points so for one rain gauge station is required for every 520 kilometer square that is for plain area in the question it will be mentioned that for plain area and you have to remember that for one rain gauge station that required for every 520 kilometer square suppose in the question it is uh, asked to find uh, the number of rain gauges so a number of rain gauges is asked and the catchment area is given as uh, 2000 2000 kilometer square and divided by the total number of stations that in the catchment area suppose the plain area is mentioned we have to take uh, 520 so we want to find the rain gauges number of rain gauges required so this will be less than 4 it will be less than 4 uh, it will be 3 point, uh, 3 point something 3 point something so the number of rain gauges will require more than 3 more than 3 and it could not be less than 4 because the value is uh, coming to be 3 point something so number of rain gauges required is 4 so, uh, next uh, for IS code one rain gauge station is required for the area between 260 to 390 km square and this is for elevated area this is for elevated area and next one rain gauge station is required for every 130 km square area for hilly areas so uh, you can find number of rain gauge uh, rain gauges you require in a catchment area so next how to find optimum number of rain gauge stations so for this we have a formula n equal to cv by e whole square and cv is given by sigma by pa into 100 where cv is coefficient of variation is allowable percent of uh, error in measurement of error sigma equal to standard deviation the standard deviation value will be given in the question the percent allowable error value will be also given in the question and you can find by putting uh, coefficient of uh, variation value and divided by allowable percent uh, percentage value and you can find n value and next uh, you can find uh, cv value also if not given further you have to find cv value by sigma by pa into 100 where pa is generally arithmetic average of rainfall values arithmetic average of rainfall values uh, they will given the rainfall values in serially and different uh, rainfall values so you will simply take pa equal to p1 plus p2 plus p3 up to how much values required by number of rainfall values so simply pa equal to p1 plus p2 plus p3 up to pn divided by n and uh, till now no questions from these formulas in gate in the last time for hijack steel while recruitment of civil engineers uh, they have asked a question regarding this formula only they have given cv value also they have given percentage error value also and they just want to find optimum number of rain gauge stations so till now no questions from get from from these uh, two formulas